Hey folks, David Stewart here. Amazon Vela, Kindle Vela. What is it? Do you got to get it? Do you got to get in on it? Hopefully I can answer some of those questions for you in this video because I've been getting lots of them from people. So before I start, let me tell you that the program I'm talking about is still in beta. It won't be officially live until July, which means all of the information that I'm giving here is subject to change before then and probably to change after July 2020. So what is Kindle Vela? Well, it is a brand new uh, platform owned by the mighty behemoth of Amazon and its incredibly large installed user base uh, that focuses on short serialized content rather than long ebooks. So rather than a 50,000 word book, you'd be looking at 10 or 20 serialized chapters or episodes for that 50,000 word story that you would release uh, one at a time. Uh, the first three episodes for any series that you would do on Vela are free. After that, people have to buy access to the stories. So one of the big things that I think differentiates this from a lot of other platforms that are trying to do serialized content, like I don't know, Storyfy or something else is that you can make a little bit of money from it right from the get-go. It's monetized in a fairly straightforward and direct fashion, even though you're using tokens rather than just money. So the way it works is a reader will buy tokens, and the amount of money that it costs per token varies depending on how many they buy. The more you buy, the better a deal you get on tokens. It's like buying, you know, little items on a mobile game that you would use to like you know, buy units or something like that in a little gotcha game. So it's the same idea there. The more that you buy, the better deal you get on it. So the value of each token varies. Uh, Amazon says that they're giving 50% of the value of those tokens to the author. So if people are buying tokens at the lowest tier, which right now is I think 140 for 199. So about $2 gets you 140 tokens one token per 100 words. So if you make a thousand word post for episode number four of your series, somebody buys it with 10 tokens. They're using 10 of their 140 they bought for $2, which is less than a penny per token, but you get paid seven cents for them buying that uh, particular episode. And obviously if they spent more money buying more tokens, you would actually get a little bit less money on that. So the amount of money that you're gonna earn is variable, but it's not variable by like some extreme amount. It's not like, oh, I made two cents on this one because everybody's buying lots of tokens. It'd be like, you make six cents instead of seven cents or something like that. So it um, overall, it is a way that you can monetize each individual story. There's a couple of catches that you should probably know about. So officially, their official terms of service is that the content that you were going to publish on Amazon Vela needs to be original. That means it can't be a book that you already published. So if you are an established author like me and you have lots of books that you published, and you're like, why don't I take one of those and I'll just chop it up into a bunch of little fragments and then we'll put them on Amazon Vela and make money that way. Well, you might run into some snags there because officially you're supposed to have never published it before. Now, if you were to unpublish the book, even if you unpublish it, you'd be breaking the terms of service. But if you were to like somehow wipe the book from the internet and then choose to do, I don't know why you would choose to do this, but if you tried to, then I don't know if you'd get away with it or not or what the penalty would be if you chose to violate that particular agreement. But we're looking at original work. Now, I am looking at experimenting with this because I have books that I haven't published. So I have lots of unpublished work that I could just put on here and experiment with and see what sticks. So if you're an author and you're thinking about jumping on this platform, I think it's a really good opportunity and I'm going to explain three big reasons why I think it's a very good opportunity for authors. So um, actually maybe I'll make it four, but the three big reasons you might want to do this, especially if you're a newer author actually, is that uh, first of all, it hits work habits really hard. If you have a release schedule where you have to release 1,000 or 1,500 or even 5,000 words on some kind of regular basis, like a 5,000 word chapter a week or 1,000 words a day or 1,500 words every other day, whatever you want to set up your release schedule as, it keeps you working towards your goal of completing your story. So you will be able to get that work done because it's 
you, you might have readers that are really expecting you to put out that story on time. So it's very good for managing your work habits and pushing you to complete your project and push through and get it done. A lot of people lose heart in the middle of their first draft and they're just not able to finish it. This to me is a great way to draft, to do your initial draft of a story is to uh, publish it in a serial format and you get some immediate feedback to see what people like. You can see if people are dropping off on their purchase of something and that can make you kind of go back and revise it or you, you know you might get a lot of feedback for each little segment that you do. So that's the first big reason is that it's great for your work habits. I talk about the importance of work habits in my book, Keys to Prolific Creativity, which I don't have in front of me, but, uh, oh wait, is that it? No, that's not it. I don't have it in front of me, but you should buy it. It's $2.99 for the ebook on Amazon, or I think like seven or $8 for the paperback. So go ahead and grab that. It's all about developing your creative process and making sure that you're able to finish your, your projects on time and under budget. So doing this is a way that you can finish your project on time and under budget. Great opportunity for that. Reason number two has to do with a more technical reinforcement that happens when you're writing, and that is pacing. So there's pacing it really occurs on two levels when you are writing, and it has to do with story tension, not so much like things happening. A lot of times people think explosions in action equals good pacing. That's not it. What makes pacing good is the, the reader really wanting to turn the page and have a resolution to some kind of conflict. And they have big conflicts like uh, you know the overall arching main plot goal of the entire story, like blow up the Death Star, throw the ring into Mount Doom. But you also have little things like, oh, are, are they going to be discovered by the ring wraiths, right? So there's tension in the moment in the story, and then there's tension for the entire story. You don't want to lose sight of either one of those. But the great thing about publishing things in, say, a thousand word, 2,500 word little chunks is that you really focus on getting an event to happen about every thousand words or every 2,000 words. For me, I feel like a story is really banging on the pacing side if something important is happening about every thousand words something's happening there's a twist uh, something's resolved and some kind of new tension builds uh, an event happens which makes you rethink previous events there's something that happens in the story every thousand words that's going to keep that reader continually turning the page to find out the answers to all the questions and when they get those answers you always want to give them another question or make them think well what's the next question you give them the next question so you're always giving them questions and answers and if you're able to do that on that thousand to two thousand word sort of pacing then you're gonna have a real page turner that you've written so it reinforces the technical level of writing things on the micro level that are very interesting and have a lot of story tension and uh, the reader really wants to uh, to have resolved to move forward so that's number two and I think maybe the third reason is really that it's just another opportunity to find an audience. Um, if you're getting in on the ground floor of this, which is on um, on July 1st, um, then you have an opportunity to kind of cut through the noise. Lots of people are going to jump on it, but probably what tends to happen is that people jump on the bandwagon after the bandwagon's rolling along and it's a lot harder to stand out. So if you're one of the first people in on the ground floor, you have a little bit better opportunity to stand out in the crowd and try things out. So one of the things that's being thrown around in a lot of discussions about Amazon Vela is what audience is going to read these serialized stories. Right now, the prevailing wisdom is that it's going to be a young adult audience because that is what is reading these stories on other platforms like Wattpad or Storyfy or something else. That serial fiction is already more popular with younger readers on other platforms. I'm going to be a little bit of a maverick and say I don't think that that is going to apply necessarily to the uh, Kindle Vela platform because you have such a massive installed user base. I think anything goes for this uh, the release of this. I don't think that serial fiction is something that is limited to young people only. I think that um, a lot of young people have, through all the different combinations of things that happen, have developed readership that's concentrated in some of these areas uh, outside of Amazon. But I think once you open this up to regular people, um, serial fiction can make a big comeback. Serial fiction has been around for a long time. Charles Dickens published serial fiction. There's no reason that we should view it as something strange or um, 
something weird or only for kids when it has such a long and rich history uh, history in sci-fi mags and all the magazines the literary magazines that existed in the 20th century which had kind of gone by the wayside and eliminated a lot of the opportunities for authors to publish serial fiction well now we have an opportunity for those to come back in a variety of genres so i think I don't know what is going on in the minds of the people who are launching this platform and what kind of audience they're expecting, but I think you really could have an opportunity to publish anything on this platform. So I'm looking at some of my unpublished books and saying, well, now I could bet I could put those up there, um, or maybe a couple books that, like, you know, I just there's maybe I need to clean up the ending a little bit or uh, add a thing here or there that I just haven't published because I haven't edited them. Well, I can start publishing them there and then kind of clean things up as I go. If they take off, great, I can continue it and make some money while I'm doing that. And then when I complete it, I can always unpublish it from the Kindle Vela platform and publish a complete book. That's an option. So while you're on the Vela platform, what's on there needs to be a serial style exclusive. You can have it on your website only if it's behind a paywall, but otherwise it really, you can't just publish it on your website. So there's advantages to serial fiction, I think, for those work habits that I mentioned. I did publish one of my very first books serially, originally on my website, and that was Muramasa Blood Drinker, uh, which is, people really like this book. It's one of my, I guess, it's a fan favorite of my books. It's a samurai story, uh, and I had a great time writing it, but putting out, I was originally, I think I was putting out 2,500 words uh, two times a week, and that schedule really just kept me pushing forward towards my goal of finishing the book, and I was able to finish the book uh, basically on time and under budget by developing a lot of my work habits into a really, really good, well-oiled machine. And and having that Tuesday and Thursday publishing schedule, and then later I was publishing every day of the week, uh, but in smaller chunks, that really helped me focus on what I needed to do. And I always managed to get the work done every single week. Even if I was traveling, I was just always very focused on that goal. It was a big help for me, and I think it could be a help for a lot of newer authors as well. So let me go ahead and I'll show you what it looks like and basically how you upload it. None of the stuff is live yet. It goes live in July. It might have some earlier beta access where people are able to read things ahead of time, but I'll show you what the interface looks like real quick so you get an idea of what's going on. So this is what the uh, interface looks like. It's very simple. I started a, uh, a book here called A Walk at Desk. Um, there, some of you may remember some snippets from this here or there. Well, I thought, okay, great. We will uh, just experiment with this and see if we can upload it and what we're gonna do with it. So this is experimental. I may take this down and may publish something else that I, um, you know, that I'm really confident for um, being maybe a hit on this platform. I have like three or four other stories that could really just be thrown up here. Um, so I have one, it says it's live, but you can't actually look at it because this doesn't actually link to anything yet. Uh, but I've made one live and there's two drafts. Um, if we go to manager story, you'll see that there's a number of episodes here. So we'll go to episode four, which is, uh, we'll edit the draft. The first part is called Witch of the Woods. So we'll do Witch of the Woods part uh, four. Now you can just copy paste your, you know, your text for this in here, as long as it's between 600 and 5,000 words. I have found that right now this copy paste function doesn't really work. So this may change, probably will change, uh, and be the function will be improved, but right now it's not working great. You actually have to import a, a doc. So you have to create a separate doc that has um, a dot doc or dot x file, doc x file, and whatever word processor you're using should be able to export that. You have to uh, import it, and then you should be able to, to see it there. So if I hit it, here's Prelude Part 4. We'll just uh, up, upload that, and then it's there. Then you can even hit a an author note. Thanks for reading. Keep up with me at dbspress.com slash list. So that's a mailing list link. Hopefully that goes through. You can open preview. Um, this is more or less what it will end up looking like on the app. And um, we go down to the bottom, a note from the author. Uh, Thanks for reading. Um, and there you go. And I'm just going to save this. I'm not going to. I'm not going to publish it. And you can even schedule your releases ahead of time. So if, let's say you you have a 15,000 word story that you've written, break it up into six parts and then spread those out so that um, people are coming. You 
like one of the best things you could do, one of the big advantages of serial fiction, if you can manage it, is that you habituate people to coming in and buying your next story every single day or every single week or whatever it's, whatever it's going to be, just like how they might visit a web comic um, website every single week. So you habituate them into reading your product every single week. Uh, and that really helps. You could also just release all of them at once and just hope people will click through and buy a bunch of them in a row. Um, you know, tokens needed to unlock this episode 16, so about one per 100 words, and then you'll get half of that, so it ends up being, you know, something like <laughs> eight cents or whatever you're gonna make per, you know, per little episode. It doesn't come out to much, but if lots of people are reading, it can really add up and you could make some money. So I'm gonna experiment with this. Maybe you'll experiment with it um, with me and get the work habits advantage and the advantage of getting in on something of ground ground zero or, not, or you know floor zero getting in on the the ground floor of something rather than having to jump on the bandwagon after it's already rolling um, and you get the technical advantage of improving your ability to pace your things at the micro level so uh, anyway thanks so much for watching hopefully this has been informative and i'll see you guys next time don't forget to like comment and subscribe you can join my mailing list like i said at dbspress.com slash list and uh, i'll see you guys next time